Welcome back to the LTM Podcast, powered by Slipstream Autosports. I'm your host, Daniel, and today we've got a brand new edition of the Motorsport Report, which is where we cover all the so- all sorts of motorsport around the world. And uh, this week we'll be covering Australian Superbikes, Formula E, IndyCar, and uh, NASCAR. So let's get underway with Aussie Superbikes. But before we do, be sure to hit the subscribe button, the like and follow. It depends on where you're watching and listening from. If you do enjoy this, uh, be sure to give us a five-star rating on Spotify. It does help us get out the more. Be sure to check out more of our podcasts as well. Um, so with that being said, let's get straight into it. So the Australian Superbike Championship travelled to Queensland Raceway for round three of their 24 season. Um, got to say, out of all the categories I'm talking about today, they were fairly clean and calm. Uh, not a lot to talk about. Um, and of course they were a lot cleaner than MotoGP, which we also covered over on our TikTok. Uh, the link is in the description below if you want to check that out. We just covered like 60, 60 second reels for it. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty calm collected weekend for, uh, the Superbikes. Um, Jones, he was unstoppable all weekend. Um, despite, um, Stofer getting off to a decent lead in the first two races, uh, sorry, in the two races, um, Jones just was able to, um, take the lead from him and lead all the way to the end. Um, so he claimed race one win with Max in second and Josh Waters in third, who just got ahead of, uh, Troy Herfoss on the final corner, uh, which was, a, there was a cool little battle between actually, um, uh, Herfoss, Waters and Al, Al, Allerton. Uh, it was a really cool battle between them. Herfoss kept running wide. It was crazy. It was funny to see. They kept running wide at the exact same corner, um, but still all went well. In terms of slip, Slipstream Autosports, Ty Lynch uh, unfortunately crashed uh, while in 12th position. Um, he finished 18th, so unlucky for him. But uh, he, in terms of pace, he's been doing fairly well from what I've heard. Uh, he just didn't have some any luck in that race, unfortunately. And race two didn't really go in his favor either with a 19th finish. Unfortunately, um, however, Jones, on the other hand, was victorious once again ahead of Herfoss and Storfer. Um, that race was fairly clean and calm. Nothing much to report. Um, now, they travel to Morgan Park for round four in a few weeks' time, so um, be sure to check that out when they do. Next up, we've got the Formula E. Uh, the circus traveled to Monaco for the Monaco e Prix. Uh, and, uh, that was a hectic race. It was crazy. Um, started off, um, with Wehrlein getting the lead after getting pole position. Uh, and then Nick DeVries was the first one to suffer damage on that one after he clipped his wing. Uh, he fell back down the order. And then there was a strange hairpin crash. Um, f- basically three wide into that Monaco hairpin never works. You barely can even get one car in. Um, so basically what happened is, uh, Buemi and DaCosta were side by side and then all of a sudden set a karma, tried to f- go down the inside. I'm not too sure what he was thinking. Um, but that didn't work out quite well. Buemi got squeezed into the wall and DaCosta actually unfortunately got stuck behind it as well. So that was a bit of an ugly situation. Um, and then later on, uh, Mortaras, uh, ran wide at the swimming pool section. I'm pretty sure it's the swimming pool section and, uh, smack bang straight into the wall there. He was okay. Um, but that brought out a safety car. And, but the thing is the drama doesn't stop there because Jack Hughes does a lance stroll under the safety car at the hairpin and damages his front wing. Um, now it's not as severe as Lance Stroll as what he did in China, um, if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my, uh, or our F1 debrief. We discuss, uh, a lot of that, but, um, yeah, I don't know what was going on. He, he, everyone was, it was bunched. It was Constantina. Everyone was bunched up. It's, it, it's very similar to the China incident, um, except Monaco hairpin and Jack Hughes just, he was the one that crashed, but, uh, all went well after that, uh, the restart Jaguar got off to a great start. Um, they ended up being a one, two ahead of, um, Penske and they managed to hold off for the win. So massive congrats to them, uh, to get a one, two in the Monaco e with Mitch Evans being the winner with Nick Cassidy in second and Stoffel Van Dorn third. So, um, solid job there. That was a fantastic race, actually. That was very enjoyable. Um, I'm actually starting to like a lot of Formula E's. I don't follow it as much as I should. Um, and I understand it is a bit of a confusing sport with, with their different rules and stuff, but the action is really cool. And if you've got time, I highly recommend checking out, 
um, at least their highlights on their um, Formula E YouTube. Um, there's a lot of a lot of action, um, and the way they do their highlights um, is really cool. And that's that's I use the I use the highlights for that, um, and it shows a lot of content. Because um, unfortunately, I can't watch the race live, but um, yeah, the highlights give me enough to understand, and uh, I highly recommend you checking that out for sure for yourself. Another crazy race uh, was IndyCar. Um, so before the race even started, well, before the weekend started, chaos happened, uh, or I guess controversy happened when uh, they announced that Team Penske was disqualified from the opening round at St. Pete uh, at the beginning of the year due to a issue with the push to pass. Um, I think it was like an illegal system that they had installed. I'm not sure. I can't remember off my head from detail, but basically uh, it put Scotty Mack all the way down to the bottom end of the championship standings. And uh, what a way to turn that around. Scotty Mack, pole position at Barber. Uh, and not only that, he also got the race win after a hectic race. Uh, and there was a really cool battle between him and Will Power. Um, all race long, it was really cool. I didn't know who was going to win. Um, but Scotty did seem to have, he had more pace than, than Will. But um, yeah, no, it was neck and neck majority of the race. There was a few crashes, though. They all started in lap one when the, about four or five cars actually spun at the back at turn one. Colton Herder got a bit uh, bullied by uh, Ferrici there with like, basically like a car magnet. They kept touching, and they wouldn't stop touching. Um, it was crazy. And then Pato Award had a horrible weekend, unfortunately, in that McLaren Arrow. Um, he he loses control. He breaks so late. He loses it under the braking. I can't believe, I can't remember what corner it is. But he was lucky to get away with that. But unfortunately, later on, he actually spun um, Pietro uh, Fittipaldi around, um, which, you know, it just makes his weekend from bad to worse, pretty much. It was a bit of an awful weekend for Pato. Um, hopefully, he'll be looking uh, for a better result next time. But, um, yeah, and then all of a sudden, the big new, the big talking point from the weekend was the fact that a mannequin came from the heavens and fell onto the track. Now, so what happened was a mannequin, there was a, a mannequin was attached on the, br on the bridge overpass and it basically fell, it fell in quite in a comedic fashion too. He's like, Wah! and uh, I think, it, I'm pretty sure it was Scott McLaughlin that crashed into it. Uh, he, he ripped the hand off it. Uh, and I saw a funny thing afterwards when, um, after he celebrated the win, he actually, he was sitting next to the mannequin. Um, so that was cool. It, it, you don't expect that. Um, when you see racing, like, yeah, in Australia, you get kangaroos, um, causing safety cars. You see echidnas causing that and whatnot. You, you see protesters in F1 causing that, but never a mannequin. That was strange. That was, <laughs> that was comedic for sure. And, uh, that. Gave me a little chuckle. I love it. I love it so much. Um, that's going to be a meme for a while. But, yes, yeah, despite um, ruining a mannequin's day, Scotty McLaughlin was able to take the win from Will Power. He got he managed to get ahead of him at the pit stop, um, at the final pit stop. And then, obviously, uh, because of that mannequin, um, I think there was a, a lot. I think it was the mannequin that caused it. Unless, no, sorry, here. It was a mannequin as well, um, but later on there was a, a spin. Um, Rasmussen spun um, his, his car 20, I believe. Uh, so that that brought out the last restart, and there was a three-lap dash to the end, and Scott McLaughlin was able to hold off from Will Power and uh, Ludenquist as well. So pretty good race overall. I quite enjoyed that. Of course, uh, they raced at Long Beach last week. Uh, I believe Scott Dixon won that one from memory. I didn't watch it though unfortunately so i didn't cover it on the series um but i'm glad i uh, was able to watch this one because it was uh, quite entertaining and by the way guys for reference like i said with formula e all these highlights are available on youtube uh for australian superbikes i heard someone on tiktok complain about it. there's not a lot of coverage for it uh if you go to sbs on demand uh their website uh you make a free account you can actually watch uh the sunday action of the superbikes so that is there that's how i found mine so whoever was that on tiktok uh that's how you find it next up is xfinity series now we go to the nascar land in dover um this race was chaos um there was rain that was fire 
There was crashes left, right, and center. But, uh, yeah, it was a crazy race. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was a crash pretty much at the start. Um, Deegan and uh, Yaley came together. Um, Jones got off to an early lead. Uh, but Allega actually ended up doing... It's funny with Allega because he he actually led the first stage and won the first stage, um, and then, unfortunately, he fell back from that point. Uh, unfortunately, he crashed out on the last lap. He from sixth, I believe, down to last. Um, so he'd have had an awful race. Uh, and then, unfortunately, um, Sieg suffered a massive engine failure, I believe, or something like that. There was a massive puff of massive flames coming out the the bottom of his car where the front wheel is, and uh, there was a huge smoke ball. But that wasn't all. Uh, after that, the rain started to open up. The heavens started to open up and caused chaos, um, which brought out a caution. Luckily, that didn't end the race prematurely. Um, they had about 20 laps running after that, uh, and uh, Ryan Churex Chur- was able to win that one ahead of uh, Kvapel and Mayer. Um, it's great to see Truex win. It's his home race. Uh, he did rather well. We had a total of two overtimes for that one. Uh, Austin Hill, sorry, before I went off topic here. Austin, Austin Hill, um, he was actually set to win. He was he was actually leading a uh, majority of the race uh, alongside Truex and Kvapil. Um I just butchered that, but it is what it is. Uh, Austin Hill did a cheeky bump and run to take the lead from Creed, um, which, in my opinion, see, I... Disclaimer, I don't like Austin Hill uh, after what he did with... He's a dirty driver, in my opinion. He After what he did with Shane Gisberg and at Coda, uh, I just... I don't like him. He's a bit of a, a of a melon. But uh, so it was good to see him uh, go sideways uh, while leading the race in the first overtime. He spun out on his own. Perfect. Love it. <laughs> so Ryan Trex uh, was able to get the second... Was able to get the win from the second overtime... Um, so that was great to see. Now, moving on to the last but not least, the Cup Series. Now, this was a lot cleaner than the Xfinity race. There was still some chaos happening, um, but um, a lot more tamer. We didn't get our first restart to about 30 or 40 laps into the first stage. Um, so that was promising. Um, and it wasn't a massive crash either. It was uh, just Todd uh, Gilliland just being spun around, I think. Um, however, there was chaos in pit road when, uh, Reddick hit car 43. Um, Reddick was coming out of the pit lane or out of his pit box while Reddit was, uh, while car 43 was heading into theirs. But, and then, uh, that's pretty much it in terms of chaos. There was three wide pit road as there always is in NASCAR. Uh, there was a crash, however, that is noticeable, uh, to talk about with Byron, Wallace and Bell, uh, I'm not sure who spun Wallace around from the outside, but he uh, got spun and unfortunately went into the firing line of uh, Byron and uh, Bell as well got caught into the back of them. Uh, nowhere to go, unfortunately. It is, it's just a racing incident. It is what it is. Like I said, I'm not sure who spun Wallace around. It was no one's fault there, um, besides from the one that spun him around, obviously. I didn't catch the name. But uh, it was Denny Hamlin that was uh, the one to beat this time around ahead of Kyle Larson. And Martin Truex. Um, there was a cool battle between Hamlin and Cole um, for that towards the back end of the race. There, uh, Hamlin actually ran wide for a while, a bit there. I was actually worried he was going to win it, but he got away with it. So uh, no, he managed to take the win for that one. Uh, and uh, that sums up a week of racing, an epic weekend of racing. Um, of course, there's no Formula One in supercars that weekend. But there was MotoGP as well to add. But like I said, we have covered that on our TikTok. If you want to check that out, like I said. Um, earlier, but uh, that is it for the Motorsport Report for this week. Um, if you guys did enjoy this podcast, be sure to hit the like and subscribe and give a five star rating on Spotify. It helps helps us, you know, get out there more and the helps get more people to check it out. Uh, we also do a V8 Supercar and Formula One podcast as well. Uh, we've also got a MotoGP that we, uh, like I said, we we did do it on YouTube, but we also do it on TikTok as well. Uh, also, in saying that, check out our TikTok and Instagram. That's where we keep up to date with all the news around the world for motorsport. Uh, and there is a lot happening at the moment, especially supercars with Erebus and Formula One with Adrian Newen and um, Mercedes and whatnot. Uh, we cover all that on um, on our TikTok and Instagram, so be sure to check that out. And uh, stay tuned for next week. We'll be, be doing our uh, Miami Grand Prix review. 
and also stay tuned for plenty more new announcements coming along the way but one thing i can say um is for those who are in south australia or planning on being in south australia on the 18th of may uh tail and bend um i'll be there at the shell v power motorsport park for round two of the uni sa australian hpv super series um i'll be i'll be uh commentating um that series that day it's a six hour race it's a pedal pre so it's a human powered trike racing series fantastic category i love it um it's, this is the adelaide this is the south australian version um which and there's also victorian and western australian i believe i'll, I'll make a video on that in the coming days so um give you guys a bit of a background on it but if you're in the area at that time i highly recommend checking it out it's a fantastic category it's fantastic uh for kids and stuff as well uh great day out for family so be sure to check that out and hope to see you there but uh i'm gonna leave it here that's all for me like i said you can follow all our socials in the description below check out slipstream autosports as well uh and uh yeah we'll catch you next week bye for now